If you have a web design agency with high level or just any website builder in general, then you're definitely going to want to watch this. As we all know, the website building process can take a week to two weeks to finally complete and have ready for our clients. And so this is one of the highest leverage activities that we can outsource to a virtual assistant so that we can continue to drive sales in our agency. So in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to hire a virtual assistant and how to get them all set up in your agency so that when you get a website client, everything is done by the VA. In my experience, the best place to hire virtual assistants is using a website called Online Job jobs.ph. This is a website where you can post jobs and hire virtual assistants from the Philippines. Filipino people are the most honest, hardworking people that I know. And so I highly recommend hiring virtual assistants from there. And right now I'm logged into my account. You'll have to create an account first. You have to pay a monthly subscription. I think it's around $70 a month to use and post job postings. But once you hire your virtual assistant, you can cancel your subscription. So you'll really only be paying the first month subscription. And then you can cancel it after that because you can easily find your first virtual assistant within a week or two. So you're going to go up here to where it says, post a job once you're logged in and then you can write out the job title the type of employment for right here you would want to do gig because at first we don't want to hire a virtual assistant on an hourly basis for 40 hours a week or 20 hours a week because we might not have that much work to give them especially if we're starting out in our agency if you have consistent website clients and it could be a full-time job for your va even better they'll find a lot more candidates that want to work full-time but there are plenty of people who would love to work on a gig by gig basis to start and then they can work and then they can work their way into a full-time position as you start getting a lot of clients for job title you could put something along the lines of web designer web designer with go high level if you're using go high level or if you're using a different website builder like webflow or wordpress you could put that in there specifically and then job description same kind of deal just some info on what the job would be about some of the skills required a good rule of thumb for this i usually pay my virtual assistants anywhere between four to six dollars an hour so you could put anything between that in this line here desired number of hours per week you could leave blank or you could just put in a low number maybe like five to ten hours a week to start and then obviously you want to put your email here when you get job applicants it'll email you every time and then your name so right here under skills requirement this is where we can put up to three different skills basically you're going to want to have like website development as one of the skills for sure and then they have different options here for like different website builders and things like that you could try putting in go high level right here so you can do like website development and go high level then you could do like copywriting then maybe do like seo as another one because you want your websites to be seo optimized for your clients and right here under notifications i would select this top one send a daily email summary of all the job applicants you don't want to get an email every single time you get an applicant because i guarantee you're probably going to get like 20 to 50 applications within the first couple days and so you definitely want to just have them send you a daily report of all the applicants you can also log in here and at the top under messages you'll see all the applicants that have applied for the job and want to interview with you but you can also get it in an email right here and then you'll just hit post job and inside of here you can see each profile and they usually have some sort of email you can reach out to or a Facebook profile so you can send them a Facebook messenger I communicate with all three of my VAs through Facebook messenger that's the easiest channel for all of us but once you start getting applications you want to reach out to the ones that you think have good resumes and maybe have shown some previous work that they've done with websites they built in the past and then you want to coordinate a date where you guys can jump on a zoom call where you can actually talk to them and interview them for the job the biggest things I like to look at when hiring are their previous websites that they've built I want to see some actual examples that they've done so I can see the quality of how good they are as a web developer and then the second biggest one for me is how good their English is I want somebody that I'm actually going to be able to communicate and somebody that will be able to communicate with my clients because after I sell a client on a website I have my virtual assistant take over from there through email back and forth with our client I want to make sure they can speak good English and type and write good English so that it just comes off as more professional once you've hired on your virtual assistant we're going to jump into high level and we're going to add them in as a user because we need to give them access to all the sub accounts for our clients so that they can go in and build the web websites. If you're using a different website builder than Go High Level, you'll still need to give them access because we're going to be integrating every client's website with Go High Level and the different lead captures, the forms, the chat widgets, the surveys, the calendars. I'll link another video down below in the description that shows you how to integrate any non Go High Level website with Go High Level through those different lead captures. But you'll just go in here, you'll click add employee and you'll put in all their information, user permissions, give them permission to everything and then user roles down here you want to put them in at the agency level and admin and then you can add them to each sub account so when you get a new client and you create their sub account you want to make sure each time that you go in and add your virtual assistant to the appropriate sub account for your client and then make sure to save it right here and the next thing you want to do is create an email for your virtual assistant inside of your google workspace account or whatever email provider you use so that they have a professional work email so when they're emailing back and forth with the clients that you land and helping them build out the website they have an email that they can use to do that and so you just want to go into your google workspace admin account 
account, click add users, go ahead and put in their information and add them in as a user. Google Workspace charges about six or seven dollars a month per user. So it's a really low cost to give them their own email. Whenever I land a client, I just tell them, hey, my website guy, Mike, is gonna be reaching out to you. He's gonna be asking you for a few different things. He's gonna be asking you for logos, images, any graphics that you wanna include on the website and any specific text that you wanna include. So he has a list of things for that he'll email them for. And I just give them the heads up and let them know that he's gonna be shooting over that email. And then from there, I'm completely hands off. I'm just setting up the go high level sub account with the automations and things like that on the back end of the site. And he's doing all the website development, which is really what takes the longest and the most amount of work. So it's a great way to leverage and save your time so you can put it into driving sales and getting more clients for your agency. For paying your virtual assistants, I just pay mine once every two weeks. Mine are full time, but if yours is on a gig by gig basis, I would establish some sort of set price that you pay them per website. Maybe it's $400, $500, but you're charging your clients, you know, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 setup fees. So you're still making a good profit and you're paying a portion of that to your virtual assistant. But for $500, most virtual assistants will be super happy with that. And then you can keep the additional profit and hopefully you're charging a monthly subscription. So you'll get to keep that as pure profit afterwards. I pay most of my virtual assistants through a software called wise.com. It automatically converts USD to the Filipino currency and it usually sends payment same day. So it's a really good one to use, connects right to your bank account and pays them out from there. Or you could use PayPal as well, create a PayPal account and then you can pay your VAs through that. Both of them have super low fees. I think the fees are like less than half a percent. So they're super, super low. So that's not going to cut into your profits very much. Once the website is completely finished, I'll also have my virtual assistant reach out to the client and ask them for admin access to their GoDaddy account or their Google domains account, wherever they have their website hosted. Most of our clients already have purchased their domain before we work with them. If they haven't, we'll have them buy their own domain through GoDaddy. My virtual assistant will get admin access to their account and he'll hook up the domain to Go High Level or Webflow. We also use for web design and he'll also get that connected for us. So he's literally doing everything from after the sale is made all the way up until the website is published and actively out there for leads and clients to visit. Well, that's it guys. That's the whole outsourcing process from hiring your VA and then getting them all set up and onboarded so they can start taking on your clients for you. And if you're in the US, you can use what you pay to your virtual assistant as a tax write-off. So it is tax deductible, which is very nice. And all they have to do for you for legal purposes is fill out a form called the W8BEN form, which is a tax form for non-US based employees. They just have to fill it out with their basic information, send it back to you. And you just want to keep that safe in your tax file just in case you ever get audited by the IRS. If you're wanting to start a web design agency with Go High Level, you can get my website SaaS Masterclass down below. It walks you through step-by-step -step on how to build websites, how to get the software set up for your clients, and really just how to get clients in the first place. And if you haven't started using Go High Level yet, you can get a 30-day free trial down below with my affiliate link. And if you sign up with my link, I'll jump on two free Zoom calls with you every single week, help answer any questions you have, help you grow your agency. And I'll also give you over $10,000 worth of free resources that I've worked on over the past few years. Or if you're already using High Level, and you want to upgrade to the 297 or the 497 plan, you can also do that with my link down below and get the exact same offer. I appreciate y'all sticking through to the end of this video. I love y'all and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.